Hello guys, welcome back to the stream. Today we've got the sprint race in Imola and it's going to be really, really exciting. We've got the drivers now just coming out of the pit lane. I'm just going to load the map up because the drivers are now ready to go racing very, very soon. The, dry, the teams will be doing the final checks on the setup and if the cars are set up, pro well, yeah, set up properly and if all the components are working as intended. But we are 30 minutes away from lights out at Imola today and there is a lot to talk about. Well, firstly, with the Mercedes's pace, where has it all gone? And have they found some of that back? Have they found some of that now, we, now we're in dry conditions? Because we've seen that in wet conditions they are nowhere to be like their pace is literally nowhere uh they nearly they they didn't get into q3 for the first time in like for a first time in over 10 years so the last time both mercedes weren't in q3 was 2012 that was such a long time ago i mean 10 full years um that's just so incredible i mean the Mercedes have just been that dominant and well they've been such a good team that the last time there wasn't a single Mercedes in Q3 was 2012. Um, I think Mercedes were definitely doing low fuel runs but um, that is quite representative of today. We're only going to have a 100 kilometer race which is going to be 21 laps so low fuel runs are going to be pretty accurate um, and another talking point is going to be are the teams going to be using medium tyres or soft tyres because if you do use the soft tyres, they start to wear out right at the end. Uh, Sergio Perez did an 18-lap stint on the soft tyres. His pace was good, but we know Sergio Perez is an absolute master at ma when it comes to managing tyres. So we'll have to see how the other drivers fare when it comes to that. Uh, hello, Charleston Lowe in the chat. Uh, is this the Q2 standings start? Um, no. So what happened yesterday, uh, there was obviously a red flag right at the end of Q3, but drivers were uh, still had time the drivers still uh, were able to set their first lap of q3 um and then the second lap of q3 obviously got cancelled because of the red flag so qualifying was yesterday um and the positions were decided on the first runs of q3 that the teams had done not uh, the final runs because they were all disrupted by a red flag um, what are the cars doing right now on stream? They're just, uh, they're coming out the pit lane, uh, doing the installation lap to make sure all the, like, the engine components and everything is working fine. And then they're just parking up on the grid. Uh, so the engineers are just waiting there, uh, ready to plug in all of the uh, important electronics and cooling hardware to make sure the cars uh, are still functional uh, for the race start. Today is a sprint race. Yes, that is correct. Uh, we, it's a 21 lap race. Um, so this is a third of the usual length. So I think uh, in Imola, it's going to be 63 laps uh, tomorrow. Uh, but today is a 21 lap race. Uh, so Leclerc is starting P6 and Sainz P3. No, Leclerc is starting in second place uh, and Sainz is starting in 10th place. Uh, it's not the Q2 times, it's the Q3 times that are being used. Uh, and in Q3, Carlos Sainz, his car was completely broken uh, because he crashed it right at the end of Q2. So he was in 10th place. And McLaren's pace, yep, that is a good point. Uh, who pointed out Joey? Uh, I think it's Joey or J J E. Um, but nevertheless, McLaren's pace, they were right at the bottom of the timesheets at the start of the season in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. And now uh, three races into the season, oh no, four races into the season, sorry. Uh, La Lando Norris is qualified in third, pos third position and Daniel Ricciardo up in sixth. Uh, they really made a really a very good recovery, but the thing is, um, what does the what does the winning in the sprint race do? Uh, so whoever wins the sprint race will start in first place in tomorrow's race. Whoever comes second will start to second place tomorrow, um, and that's that's probably what's going. Well, that is what's going to happen. Uh, so wherever you finish today is where you start the race tomorrow. Um, but back to McLaren. McLaren, uh, they were so, so far down and they've, they've put themselves back up here, but they've had a really horrible morning today. Um, Daniel Ricciardo didn't get to go out of the, or go, go out on track whatsoever throughout the entirety of FP2 because of the fact that he had uh, some sort of issue. McLaren didn't exactly tell us, um, but they, they had issues and they couldn't go out running. Uh, so, uh, Daniel Ricciardo has had zero laps of dry running at Imola. So hit the first lap on lap number one of the sprint race is going to be Daniel Ricciardo's first lap in the dry conditions. So it's going to be uh, very, very difficult for Daniel Ricciardo to, to maintain maybe some positions in the first lap. We'll probably see him drop down a few because of the simple fact that he has no experience in the dry, whereas all of the other drivers have done 20, 25 laps. 
um, of running. So that's not going to be great. Uh, hello, Game of Pabstick King. Um, and everyone else in the chat, I really do appreciate you guys tuning in. We got 300, 400 people already. Uh, if you guys haven't hit the like button, be sure to do so. Uh, it does help out the channel. And uh, lights out will be in 25 minutes for the sprint race here in Imola. Um, oh, and the other thing, uh, McLaren have had a really bad morning with Daniel Ricciardo, but on the other side of the garage, Lando Norris, he had a brake issue. Uh, they didn't exactly specify what the brake issue was again, but it seemed to be that they had some sort of uh, brake by wire failure. So uh, the brakes weren't going to their maximum strength and they, and they just had a mechanical issue with the brakes. So they had to fix that uh, for, da for Lando Norris. So he didn't get that many laps either in practice. So both McLarens, they were on the front foot yesterday in the wet conditions, but they've had a horrible morning just due to simple reliability issues. Uh, we'll see how that plays out for them. But, but Lando Norris is starting in third position. So he's in a really good shot to potentially start on the podium. Well, start in the top three and maybe score a podium depending on how well Carlos Sainz and Sergio Perez drive today. But uh, with Lando Norris, Kevin Magnussen, Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo between Sergio Perez and the podium, it's going to be a very, very tall order for him to, to actually like climb all of those positions and get into that third place spot. Place spot. Um, we'll just have to see how that goes for him, really. Um, so how many points is it possible? OK, so um, what's going on this weekend is last year how it was it was three points for first position two points for second position and one point for third position and it was only the top three drivers that scored points uh this this year what they've done for the sprint race is the first position place is going to get eight points the second position place is going to get seven points and it goes down like that all the way to eighth uh, to eighth position who gets one point uh do i know if bottas's car is going to be ready uh, i think bottas is out on track right now uh, as far as I can tell, yes, he is. Uh, he's, he's driven around the track and he's on, he's at the starting grid. So, uh, Valtteri Bottas's car should be good, uh, for the, uh, for the race today. And, and yeah, Kevin Magnussen bringing that has to a podium. I mean, even Gunter Steiner said it from when you're starting in fourth place, you can genuinely go and score a podium. Um, and the, even the fact that he's starting up in fourth place is going to be scoring some pretty good points for Haas, uh, nevertheless. So it's, it's very, very good. It's a very good position that Kevin Magnussen has found himself in. Um, and he was kind of on the lucky side of, uh, the red flag situation yesterday. Yesterday with five red flags, uh, absolutely crazy, but, um, uh, some drivers found themselves on the lucky side of the red flag situation and some drivers like Russell and Hamilton. Oh, well, mainly Guan Yu Zhou. In fact, he, he really lost out. Uh, Valtteri Bottas was in eighth position. Um, after qualifying uh, in Q3, but Guan Yu Zhou was on fire in Q1. He was like, I think it was three quarters of a second quicker than Valtteri Bottas in Q1. Uh, but then unfortunately got knocked out uh, of Q2 because of a red flag, uh, because of a red flag and it being like the wrong timing according to his lap. So um, we'll see uh, which drivers will go up the, gr up the grid and which drivers will go out. Uh, why the driver's out and the race starts in 20 minutes. Uh, the drivers are out on track. That's usually how it is. They all line up on the grid uh, early um, because... Well, the engineers have to do all the checks on the car before they can actually go ra racing. Um, so that's why they go out 20 minutes early. I mean, um, so th and then they'll do the formation lap, of course. And then after the formation lap, we will go racing. Um, but there we go. I thought Mercedes is going to bring some upgrades when they get to Europe. Uh, I don't know when Mercedes brought up. Oh, no, they did. They had a t uh, they only brought some really small upgrades, though. Uh, they brought um, a, a new floor, but it seems to be just kind of like a very small upgrade. They've got a t some more fins uh, on the rear part of the floor. But apart from that, it's nothing major um, for uh, Mercedes in terms of in terms of upgrades. Um, yeah. So we have got. Uh, oh, where is Albon? Uh, that's a good point. I've moved up. I've moved all of this information too far. There we go. Alex Albon is there. And I'm just going to move this down as well. One sec, guys. There we go. Let's just move down. Right, there's Alex Albon. Yeah, that's my fault. I, I accidentally covered it up. Um, there we go. How's the climate? It's completely dry in Imola today. There is rain forecast for tomorrow, but uh, right for now, it is completely dry. Uh, and we'll be having just normal dry running, and it will be most likely the drivers will be uh, picking between the soft tyres and the medium tyres. We'll have to wait and see which tyres they do choose, um, but 
it's going to be pretty close because the soft tires are quicker in the in the initial phase of the race it's 20 21 laps so for the maybe the first 14 15 la or maybe first 12 14 laps the soft tires are faster um but then in the later parts of the race the medium tires faster and it really is a, a thing of who can manage those soft tires and go as long as possible or is the quicker strategy going to be start on the medium tires um, and then kind of conserve and just maintain your position against the soft tire runners? So you'll have to dr do a lot of defensive driving. Um, but once you get to the later part of the races, you'll have a lot more tire life compared to everyone else. And then you can go maximum attack and, and make a lot of overtakes towards the end when everyone else on the soft is really struggling for tire wear. Um, so in FP2, Sergio Perez, who is absolutely amazing on his tires, um, did 18 laps on the soft tires with no pace drop off. Like the, obviously there was just some pace drop off, but it was it, there was nothing major in terms of like he hadn't hit a cliff or anything. So Sergio Perez can definitely do 18 laps on soft tires, but that is only in clean air. This time he has six drivers ahead of him, so that six drivers, uh, well, those six drivers are going to be producing a lot of warm air coming out their exhaust pipes, uh, and that's really going to be overheating those tires. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge to manage those soft tires for 21 laps. Um, but if anyone can do it, Sergio Perez can. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see. Well, Sergio Perez and Alex Albon. Uh, we have to point out that Alex Albon did, I think it was 50 laps, on oh no, a 52 laps or something on hard tyres uh, in Australia last year. Oh, not last year, yes, uh, last week. Uh, or the, wait, two weeks ago. But uh, nevertheless, yeah, Alex Albon uh, did a great job at managing his tyres and so did Sergio Perez. Um, so we'll see if those guys can uh, can do that. So is today the normal sprint race and tomorrow's the, the, the full race? Yeah, that is correct, Sujal. Um, do we know who uses which tires? Not yet. The data has not come through, but when it does, uh, I will let you know. Um, yeah. All right. Um, five different cars in the top five. Yeah. Uh, it makes, it makes the sprint race all, all the more exciting. Um, it was, well, the only reason that's really happened is because Carlos Sainz had a horrible qualifying. Uh, well, he just made a bit of a mistake at the end of Q2 really. Uh, and that really put him on the back foot. Uh, and the same can be said for Sergio Perez. He got caught out by the timings of the red flags. In fact, Sergio Perez was on for an absolutely mega lap. Nearly all of his, uh, all of the mini sectors in sector one. So that's like certain parts, certain corners and certain straights of sector one. All of them were purple and pretty much the same for sector two. But then there was the red flag, uh, which really screwed up Sergio Perez's lap. But uh, he really, it, Sergio Perez was very much could have challenged for pole position here because he was setting purple sectors everywhere. Uh, he just got really unlucky with that red flag from Lando Norris. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, and now if he has the pace, then he'll be able to make some overtakes uh, and then he will may be able to move up the grid. Uh, and it makes the race a lot more exciting for us as well. We'll probably be seeing uh, the Mercedes move up uh, the grid as well. So the Mercedes really seem to struggle in the dry, uh, in the in the low fuel runs, like proper low low fuel during qualifying. That's when they get the most most porpoising, um, and that's when they have the biggest issues really. So if well, Mercedes ca definitely once they go into the race kind of conditions, the car is a lot quicker in terms of race pace compared to it is in what it is in quality pace. So I suspect that we'll see the Mercedes drivers making some overtakes, and we know Hamilton can definitely make some overtakes in the sprint races as he did in brazil last year if you guys remember uh, he got disqualified because his drs flap was uh like half a millimeter too big or something um and then he started in 20th place but then made 15 overtakes over the course of 23 laps so we could definitely see him do something similar uh maybe not to the same extent because the mercedes car is nowhere near as dominant but uh yeah there's a lot of exciting overtaking opportunities here at imola today uh the weather is a bone dry no sight of rain whatsoever um and yeah, we'll just be expecting the track temperature will be 28 degrees uh, and the air temperature will be 20 degrees. So a significantly hotter than than yesterday as well, but it probably won't be causing any overtaking issues whatsoever. Uh, we've got 600 people watching. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Really do appreciate the support. Uh, the race is starting in 15 minutes time uh, and then we've got a lot to go through before that, uh, before lights out. But I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit the like button and subscribe. Hopefully we can hit 35k uh, this weekend. That would be absolutely crazy. Uh, that's 3,000 more subscribers to go. Um, but if you haven't subscribed, uh, I do stream every single race, qualifying and sprint race. Um, so would really appreciate your support. Um, 
Right, so, uh, some more information. Sebastian Vettel uh, in, is in ninth place. First time he's reached Q3 uh, this season. And the first time, I think Aston Martin as well has re reached Q3 this season. Uh, he says the team spirit in Aston Martin is still very, very high, um, even though they are struggling quite a bit uh, in terms of their performance. And... Oh, I was about to sneeze there, but it just it just disappeared. All right, never mind. Um, but Sebastian Vettel done a good job there, and hopefully uh, he can score some points for Aston Martin because Aston Martin is the only team uh, so far this year that hasn't scored any points whatsoever. Uh, and it'll be great to see Seb Vettel score some points, and it would be even better if he was on the podium. But I do think that is rather unlikely. Um, Gunter Steiner, um, the team principal of Haas, has said Kevin Magnussen should take some calculated risks when going into qualifying uh, sprint the sprint race today, um, because of the fact that if he does uh, make some make some good overtakes, maybe on Lando Norris at the start of this race, because uh, Lando Norris is having some brake issues, uh, we'll wait and see uh, if those result if those are properly fixed or if he if those carry on slightly uh, into the race. But Kevin Magnussen will do his absolute best to potentially score a podium for Haas we know that Haas car is really quick and if they've got the setup correct then they can have they can definitely challenge for a podium uh, and that would be absolutely great to see um any information about the weather yep it's completely dry there is no rain whatsoever um also some more uh information uh if you guys remember back to the start of the season I've been saying that the Red Bull is the heaviest car out of the lot, uh, out of all of the cars, um, but the thing is, uh, Red Bull have been doing some major weight shedding, they've reduced the mass of their car by five kilograms, it may not seem like a lot, but um, when the minimum weight uh, was, I think the minimum weight is 790 kilograms, and the Red Bull was 820-ish, like those are all the rumors of what the Red Bull's weight was, but if they've brought it down by five kilograms, that's a pretty sizable improvement, uh, and the lower your the lower the mass of the car, the less tire wear you're going to have. Uh, so that just puts you in a better position for all of your laps in a, in a race situation, um, and it just gives you a lot less tire wear, which is uh, definitely great because it can it just means that you can push even uh, even harder when you are when you do need to attack. Um, let's see, who else is there to talk about? Fernando Alonso. Uh, so Fernando Alonso has uh, kind of been getting the, the nice treatment from Al Alpine. Uh, so Alpine uh, have got an upgraded floor and Fernando Alonso is the only driver to, well, the only one out of him and Esteban Ocon to get to actually get that upgraded floor. Uh, Esteban Ocon will be getting that upgrade in Miami in two weeks time, which I'll also be streaming. So um, go ahead and tune in, uh, make sure you tune in for that race. But uh, Fernando Alonso has got that upgraded floor and he really looks like he's got some pace here. Um, if you guys have been F1 fans for long for, for a long time, then you might remember all the way back in 2005, uh, Fernando Alonso was battling it with Schumacher. Uh, and it was some like absolutely crazy battles. I, I personally didn't watch the race in 2005. I've watched some highlights though. Um, and definitely it was, it was some great, great racing, uh, here in Imola, uh, from Fernando Alonso. So he definitely knows how to attack and be aggressive at this circuit. And we'll see if he can put that into action and maybe move up the field. Let's see. Oh, also, uh, just yesterday, uh, Esteban Ocon start, uh, qualified in 19th place, but that was only due to a gearbox issue that he had. Uh, so that there was no, like, Esteban Ocon is so much slower than Fernando Alonso because looking at the timing sheets, it does look like that Fernando Alonso is in 5th and Ocon's in 19th. But uh, no, it was a gearbox issue for Esteban Ocon, so that is why he's down in 19th place. He'll be looking to recover back up. And the same could be said for Yuki Tsunoda and Pierre Gasly, both of those drivers. It's their home race. Uh, this is the Imola circuit is the closest uh, to the, um, the Alpha Tauri factory. Uh, so it is technically their home race, and they really haven't done so well. Both of them getting knocked out in Q1. Um, they'll be looking to recover, but I, I, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for them. Um, because the Alpha Tari isn't looking particularly uh, quick in terms of pace. But there is one thing to consider, guys. The, the drivers and the teams that were slow in qualifying yesterday, they could have compromised their setup because they knew it was going to be dry today. Like the forecast uh, was predicted for a week that it's going to be wet on, on Friday, um, dry on Saturday, and then maybe wet on Sunday. So um, we could see maybe Alpha Tari, they could have went for a dry setup. Um, and because because it's a dry setup, 
uh, it'll be slow in the wet conditions like it was yesterday but then today in the dry they're going to be really really quick and they they could see a lot more pace um compared to all of the other teams we just don't know really we haven't seen that much dry running in fp2 they didn't look that strong um but maybe they were just hiding their pace we'll just have to wait and see um the weather is completely dry um but yeah i've said that quite a lot of times actually but the weather is dry um it was raining yesterday there's a chance of rain tomorrow but it's completely dry today um there we go and yeah i mean a wet race tomorrow will make it very very exciting uh there's i think there's a 30 percent chance of rain but uh we'll just have to wait and see uh what teams are on the wets none of the teams are on the wets so are all on dry tires uh the main choice of tires is going to be soft or the mediums we'll have to wait and see which uh, which tires the teams decide to go on because it's going to be pretty tough um getting to the end on those softs but your your pace at the start of the race is going to be really bad on those mediums so it's which compromise do you want to take and which compromise do you think is going to pay off in the long run um who do i think will win i think uh max verstappen will win this um but it'll be without it'll be with a it'll be with a pretty tough battle against charles leclerc but i think max verstappen will maintain his position in the lead uh, not to say that he won't lose it i think leclerc will make an overtake against max verstappen at some point in the race um but i think mr verstappen will be able to regain that advantage over leclerc simply because of the fact that the red bull is slightly quicker going down the straights uh compared to the ferrari it's around about five seven uh, five to seven kilometers faster going down the straights and that tiny little change a tiny little difference in top speed uh really adds up because this straight in imola is very very long and the drs zone as well is pretty chunky so uh the best overtaking opportunities are going to be going down into turn number one uh the, the drivers will be approaching around about 300 kilometers an hour breaking all the way down to 150 um it's around about a fourth gear corner, so a pretty big braking zone, uh, and that and the DRS zone as well. Last year proved to be very, very effective because rather than in some DRS zones, like in Austria, uh, you could just slipstream pass and the overtake would be done in the DRS zone. The DRS zone here in Imola, what it does is put both drivers side by side going into turn number one, which makes which makes the battles so much more interesting um so i think verstappen and leclerc maybe they're gonna bang wheels as well uh, because we both know they can get pretty feisty um and we'll have to wait and see imola is pretty tough on overtaking but turn number one uh, and the final final two corners as well uh pretty good overtaking opportunities uh at imola everywhere else it's it's pretty much single file because of the simple fact that the track is rather narrow so it's pretty risky to go side by side uh so there we go what's the difference between qualifying and the sprint race well qualifying decides the uh the positions for the sprint race and the sprint race decides the positions for the actual race um also guys uh be sure to hit that like button uh really does help out the channel we're on 1200 people watching and we're six minutes till lights out um and if you could hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already that would really be appreciated um all right uh, Charles, a uh, Charles DNF should make the championship more exciting. Yes, it would, of course, because Verstappen's had two DNFs, really bad luck with that Honda engine, two different issues. Um, and the issue, in fact, in FP3 was, uh, oh, not in FP3, sorry, in Australia, uh, I, they didn't name exactly which component it was, but basically there was this component in the engine that had never broken down before. It had done so many, uh, like it done hundreds of thousands of kilometers uh, and it had never broken. Um, but then, Oh no, it done thousands of kilometers, not hundreds of thousands. But nevertheless, it was it was basically unbro unbreakable. Um, and then that one time in Australia, it decided to fail, and that's what caused Max Verstappen's DNF. So it was really, really unfortunate. Uh, what do I think of Mercedes being P1 in FP3? I don't think uh, it's too much to read into, really. Mercedes were doing quite a lot of low fuel runs, and they were kind of just testing out the porpoising in the dry conditions. Because uh, what happens is the teams have their simulation, uh, like wind tunnel testing, and their simulations back at the factory. But they, they only run those simulations in the dry conditions, because running them in the wet and having all the rain and stuff makes the simulations a whole lot more complicated. And you can't really have rain falling in a wind tunnel as well so um that's why i think they just went on low fuel runs in fp3 to make sure that they get that data to see if the simulations are accurate and if they can get rid of the porpoising or not um but there we go uh thank you for everyone that is subscribing uh Rooseville and thomas and jet uh, do appreciate all the support um 
how do they define the grid for qualifying? So yesterday, uh, whoever set the fastest lap yesterday, uh, that's just the order of fastest laps uh, that were set in yesterday's qualifying session. Um, so that is that is what it is, really. Um, and then today's, today's the sprint race. Uh, we are now four minutes away. So I'm just going to take you through uh, all of the, the lap in Imola, and then we will get going for the actual race as well. Um, but... All right. Uh, actually, the, the name for this Imola race, right? So I'm just going to read it out. Formula One Rolex Gran Perimelo Perimo uh, del Made in Italy El del Emilia Romagna 2022 Italian Grand Prix. Um, oh, no. Emilia Romagna Grand Prix uh, 2022. That's what the official name of this uh, of this F1 race is. So uh, very interesting, but welcome along to that. Uh, and here we are here in Imola today, uh, where we have uh, 19 corners, 10 to the left and nine to the right. Uh, we'll be driving on, I think it's a four mile long circuit where the drivers will be driving 21 laps, uh, competing for nine, uh, eight points for first position, going all the way down to first uh, 1.4 eighth position. Um, yeah, no, I was just making fun of the fact that the the name, the Imola, like the Grand Prix name was so long. Um, I don't know why, but all every time we race in Imola, the, the Grand Prix name is absolutely massive. Um, but there we go. Um, three minutes now till the drivers get underway on their formation lap. And in first and second position, we have Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, the two title rivals lining up alongside each other. Yesterday, Leclerc was eight tenths off the pace. Absolutely. Uh, it was a very big surprise in, indeed for the pace to be that far off. Um, but here we are in the dry conditions, and according to the simulations, both Red Bull and Ferrari, their pace is very, very similar in the dry. Uh, in third and fourth position, second row of the grid, we've got Lando Norris and Kevin Magnussen. They've both had, uh, this is both one of their best qualifyings uh, of the season. Uh, Kevin Magnussen has, in, in fact, only qualified P4 three times in his career. Uh, this is the third time, and the first time he qualified P4, he went on to score a podium. So it's... it's um, Good good luck for uh, Kevin Magnussen. On the third row of the grid, we've got Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel Ricciardo has got no running whatsoever uh, today in FP2 in the dry conditions um, because of tech, uh, mechanical issues with his car. So he has zero dry running experience here in Imola uh, going into lap number one of this race. So it'll be pretty tough for him to maintain position, but we'll see how he does it. Um, the fourth row of the grid, we have Sergio Perez and Valtteri Bottas. Perez, uh, he was on an absolutely mega lap yesterday, but got screwed over by the red flag. So that's why he's down in seventh position. Uh, and then we have Valtteri Bottas in eighth after an exhaust engine issue. And Bottas also, like Daniel Ricciardo, has no experience in the dry conditions because he also, his exhaust issue was not properly fixed yesterday. And therefore he got no running in FP2 today either. Um, but we have completely dry conditions here in Imola today. Uh, we've got uh, Sebastian Vettel and Carlos Sainz on the fifth row of the grid. Um, Vettel very much uh, his first Q3 of this season. And we've got Carlos Sainz uh, needing to recover after his mistake in qualifying. The tyre data has come through and everyone is starting the race on the soft tyres except for Kevin Magnussen, Mick Schumacher and Nicholas Latifi. So everyone else will be going very, very quick at the race start and all of and the, those three drivers will have a lot more pace coming towards the end of this race um, and we'll wait and see how that plays out for them. Uh, it'll be very, very interesting to see how that how the how the tie degradation goes, uh, because uh, looking at the simulations, the dirty air really does overheat your tires Um and it's going to be pretty tough to go 21 laps on those softs. Um, on the on the sixth row of the grid, we've got George Russell and Mick Schumacher. Uh, Russell really looking to move up a couple of positions here, uh, especially after that horrific qualifying uh, for Mercedes as a whole. Uh, Mick Schumacher as, as well, it, he, he wants to move up to, closer to his teammate, but he's starting on those medium tyres, which is going to make it very, very tough for him. Uh, we'll wait and see how that plays out for him. We've got Lewis Hamilton and Guan Yu Zhou in 13th and 14th, both drivers getting very unlucky due to the red flags yesterday. Um, nevertheless, though, they will see, uh, they will try and uh, move up towards the points uh, so they can have a better starting position in tomorrow's race. We've got Lance Stroll and Yuki Tsunoda uh, in 15th and 16th. Both of them uh, just... 
well, they haven't had the best of weekends, really, uh, and they're just looking to maybe make some improvements, and we could potentially see Yuki Tsunoda and Pierre Gasly both moving up um, a couple of positions because they, I think they will probably have a dry setup. Guys, the race is not live yet. Um, this is the formation lap. The drivers are just setting up the formation lap now, and then we will be going racing, so I just want to point that out. Um, all right, and then we have got... Um, Latifi and Ocon in 18th and 19th and then Alex Albon in 20th position after a brake failure yesterday because of his uh because he had one of the switches on his steering wheel in the wrong position uh so rather unfortunate there uh we've got 2500 people tuning in thank you so so much uh, everyone for tuning in do appreciate the support um we've got the race starting uh, once the formation lap is over uh and I cannot wait for it to get underway all right so here we go. Uh, I'm just going to refresh this website. Uh, so hopefully we get the, the most up to date information. Um, but. All right, let's go. All right, so so the session will be live. Uh, the drivers now just weaving around, warming up their tires, uh, and then we will be going racing very, very soon. And I cannot wait. All right. Um, so let me know what your predictions are in the chat. The, the formation lap is coming to an end uh, and we shall see how this sprint race goes. If you guys haven't hit the like button, be sure to do so before the race starts because it's going to be an action packed Imola sprint race today uh, and I cannot wait to get started. All right. Um, so the drivers now just coming out the final corner, doing their final burnouts to warm up the tires um, and then we will be going racing. All right. So this is it, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc lining up on the front row of the grid. Uh, Leclerc and Verstappen both uh, aiming to try and get the best start they possibly can. Um, I think it's uh, Max Verstappen who is on the clean side of the grid here. And so any driver on the evens uh, who has an odd number on their starting grid position has the clean side of the grid. And the drivers who are on the even numbers have the the dirty side of the grid so we'll wait and see how that plays out for them um, but it shouldn't be too significant because there hasn't been that much dry running uh, anyway uh, or at Imola in the in this weekend all right so here we go then um we are the final drivers now just coming up to the grid uh, Hamilton uh, Hamilton just coming into his grid slot now we've got Guan Yu Zhou Stroll and Sonoda behind him but we are about to go racing here in Imola and I cannot wait all right so this is it now uh everyone's uh nobody's brakes are on fire this time around um and everyone is has lined up on the grid we will have one two three five lights are out and it's wait hold on um all right, yeah, lights are out and away we go. Um, so Max Verstappen is still, uh, well, has fell back a lot of positions. Leclerc and Norris getting absolutely rocket ship starts, uh, but Leclerc's got the lead here. And Daniel Ricciardo going into turn one, very much gets squeezed to the inside and he drops down into six positions. Sergio Perez making up two positions on the race start. And the same can be said for Carlos Sainz. Both both drivers wanted exactly that, but Le Leclerc maintains the lead ahead of Verstappen going into Tosa now. Uh, Norris and Magnussen both hold their position in fourth and fifth. Uh, Kevin Magnussen doing a good job because he's on those medium tires which have no uh, which have no temperature right now. Uh, so he's doing a solid job to maintain that position. And as we go through into uh, lap number into the second sector we have Yuki Tsunoda and Lance Stroll making up lots of positions and we've got a yellow flag on the track and it looks like Guan Yu Zhou uh, has had an incident and has spun so let me just let me just change that one second uh yellow flag Guan Yu Zhou has spun on the track we have a full safety car full safety car um, this is really going to be benefiting all of the drivers on the soft tires, um, but Guan Yu Zhou has stopped on the track. Uh, I'm going to switch the, the thing over to the tires, but Zhou has had an issue, uh, and it looks like uh, going through into the corner of Piratelli, um, it's, he's, he's just been squeezed a bit, and he is out of this race. Uh, the safety car is out on track now. You can see it on the map there. Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen uh, just driving past. I don't know why they're driving past it. I think the safety car thing is glitched, uh, but we do have a safety car 
uh, out on track, which will probably take probably three or four laps till Guan Yu Zhou's car is safely taken off the track before we can go racing. But uh, rather unfortunate there, lap, lap one incident there for Guan Yu Zhou. Uh, he, was, he, had, he had a really good qualifying, um, but now he's down in 20th position. Not ideal whatsoever. Um, Hamilton hit the wall, apparently. Um, well, it looks like his car's fine. Pierre Gasly is gone into the pit, so I think there must have been a tangle between Pierre Gasly and Guan Yu Zhou. Um, so let's see what's happened. Yeah, Pierre Gasly might have had an incident and he's gone to replace his front wing um, because that is why... Um, well, that why, why else would you go into the pits? Um, but the, the driver's now just going around, avoiding Guan Yu Zhou's crash, of course, uh, and the team's... Um, so... Yeah, there was contact between Pierre Gasly and Guan Yu Zhou. Uh, Gasly had a front right puncture, actually, uh, and he goes into the pits for a new front wing as well. So front right puncture for Pierre Gasly and a new front wing. Um, but he's now back out, coming out of the pit lane. Uh, he will be coming onto the back of uh, Alex Albon, who is currently holding the last placed position um, under this safety car queue. Um, this safety car is going to make it pretty difficult for uh, Kevin Magnussen and Mick Schumacher to hold their position because both of them are uh, on the on the medium tires and the medium tires haven't got enough temperature yet and we've got gone straight into safety car so it's not going to be great but uh, for those teams and we'll just have to wait and see how that goes for them. So what happened was Pierre Gasly was going down the inside, Guan Yu Zhou didn't really see him uh, and then they both had a well they both collided. It was uh, Pierre Gasly's front right tire and Guan Yu Zhou's rear left. Uh, and they had an incident, and then they just, uh, Zoe went into the wall, and Pierre Gazzi got a puncture, so uh, it was a lose-lose situation for for both of them, um, but uh, both drivers are fine, um, and it will be a matter of time before we go racing. All right. What happened with Hamilton? I mean, I don't know what happened with Hamilton, to be honest. Uh, you guys in the chat are saying that Hamilton hit the wall or something, but there aren't that many walls in Imola, so I'm not exactly sure what you guys are talking about. Um... So Hamilton, Hamilton should be fine. He, he hasn't lost any positions. He started the race, I think, in fi in in 15th, uh, and then he's, he's in 15th now. So uh, there we go. The Mercedes car really isn't that quick. George Russell did, did move up a, a position, I think, but uh, still, nevertheless, not the rocket ship start that he wanted. Um, and Fernando Alonso as well. He he was he was so well known uh, back in his Ferrari days for getting absolutely rocket starts. Um, but he started the race up in fifth position. He's now he's down into seventh. He's lost out two positions. The big gainers on lap number one uh, was Sergio Perez and Carlos Sainz. Both those drivers needed a bit of a recovery drive, uh, and they moved up two positions respectively. Um, also, uh, the conditions on the track are completely dry. Uh, there is no, there's no wet race. There's no wet, basically. It's completely dry. There's been no rain uh, since yesterday. Um, and the track, nothing to worry about. Uh, the lap counter is not working. Yes, uh, that is my mistake. And I don't think it's going to work for the rest of this race, to be honest, guys, because uh, the website that I'm using for the lap counter is slightly glitched. Uh, oh no, I think, oh, what I can do, I might be able to fix it. Just give me, like, two seconds, I'm going to stop talking while I fix it. Um, there we go, three laps out of 21. Hopefully, yeah, there we go. Uh, nice to see that is, well, it's working now. Um, we will see maybe the safety car, safety car is not coming in this lap, it will come in the lap after this, I'm guessing, because they've just, they've picked up Gran Ujo's car, and they've put it onto the back of the truck, um, but safety car is not in this lap just yet. Uh, what happened with Max? He just got a bad start. Um, it was La Leclerc and Lando Norris got really good starts, and Verstappen was slightly slow, um, and that... Uh, so Leclerc got the lead, but uh, Verstappen uh, had a little battle with uh, with Norris and was able to hold position. Um, we got nearly 4,400 people watching. Guys, if you haven't hit the like button or subscribed, please be sure to do so. It really does help out the channel. Um, and I'm trying to hit, hit 35k today, uh, well, this weekend. Um, but if you guys haven't subscribed, it really does help out. Uh, and hopefully we can hit that target as well. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, we are still under safety car conditions now. Uh, no one has boxed. Uh, the only drivers on the medium tyres are Latifi, Schumacher and Magnussen. Uh, and everyone else has started the race on a fresh set of softs or a pretty much fresh set of softs, as far as I can tell. Um, so there we go. All right. Lovely. Um, 
So the stewards have said the incident between uh, Pierre Gasly and Guan Yu Zhou will be reviewed no further. There'll be no further investigation required. And I think that's fair enough, really, because um, both drivers just kind of crashed into each other. Both of them lost out. Gasly uh, went to the back of the grid and Guan Yu Zhou is out of the race. So it's fair enough. Uh, there is no more investigation needed. The harm has already been done. So no need to add more penalties. Uh, the grass is not wet. It is still dry, uh, like is the rest of the track as well. So... Um, yeah, nothing to nothing to worry about there. Uh, so even if you do go off slightly, you will still have the dry conditions. Uh, is the safety car ending? Uh, I have a feeling safety car is ending. All the drivers are bunching up. Leclerc is letting the safety car go. Um, I think so. We'll have the safety car coming in in a lot. We've got wow, we've got ten people subscribing in the in the space of one minute. Uh, thank you so so much to everyone that has tuned it, uh, that has just hit the subscribe button. Uh, shorts three hundred and four. Uh, Roy, Timo, Oscar, uh, really do appreciate it. All right, I'm going to change the safety car to a green flag uh, in a second once once Leclerc does go. But it's Leclerc. It's in Leclerc's best interest to go as late as possible because this straight is so so long. Verstappen could easily just slip stream straight past him. So I'm going to switch the safety car to a green flag, um, and Leclerc will be going now, just going straight down. Um, Verstappen has not, Verstappen's right on his tail. It's going to be close going down into turn number one if the slipstream is as powerful as it usually is. So here we go, Verstappen and Leclerc going to turn one. The gap now is half a second between the two drivers. Verstappen is tucked right in unfortunately not close enough to go into move into turn number one it's single file um but alex albon could make a move on nicholas satifi and he does so uh very nice move there from alex albon on his teammate no no sign of contact there whatsoever so clean overtake there for alex albon but at the front of the field we've still got leclerc heading verstappen and then we've got lando norris behind him who's already start to fall away leclerc and verstappen are already out of drs range of lando norris so uh you just know that those two drivers are in a completely different league compared to everyone else um Kevin Magnussen right on the tail of Norris, even though he's on those medium tires, and Sergio Perez, in fact, uh, on the tail of the of Magnussen. Um, the, the, um, what am I going to say? Oh yeah, the Red Bulls have the highest top speeds out of every single car on the grid uh, today, so it's, it should be a breeze for Sergio Perez to get past Kevin Magnussen. But DRS has not been enabled yet; it will be enabled next lap. Um, Everyone that has subscribed as well, thank you so, so much. Really does do appreciate all the support. Uh, you're all popping up at the bottom right, and I think you all get uh, your own little, uh, like, meme, I guess, um, or just, like, a little thank you image. So really do appreciate it. Um, but Leclerc setting fastest lap of the race, going slightly quicker than Max Verstappen. Uh, we'll wait and see how that goes. There is no fastest lap point here uh, this weekend. Uh, uh, wait, in the sprint race, sorry. There's no fastest lap point, but uh, there, there will be tomorrow. So it's just eight points for the driver that wins the race and then seven points for the driver that's second. And then it's one and one point uh, reducing as you go down. Uh, there's a black and white flag for Kevin Magnussen for weaving on the straight. So Kevin Magnussen is doing his utmost best to try and keep Sergio Perez behind. He's even been weaving on the straight because uh, the fact that he's on those hard uh, those medium tires he really needs to get as much temperature as possible um to get to, to get them into the correct working range so he can get lo loads of grip um but he has to weave to do on the track so the fia have given a black and white flag that's just a warning flag no penalty um but if he does it again then he could get a, then he could get a penalty so Magnussen has to be careful sergio perez is still within drs range and it will be getting enabled this lap um so there we go. All right. So we, we are now five, uh, six laps into this race and the safety car has really helped all of the soft tire runners because you have to consider the soft tires were going to, it was going to be very, very close to getting to the end of those race on the soft tires without hitting a cliff. Um, but that safety car going slowly for five laps has really helped everyone on the soft tires. So it's it's not going to be that hot, hot. It's not going to be that hard for Perez to make an overtake, but Magnussen will do his utmost best at defending. We know Magnussen is a very, very tough driver. Uh, when do we get DRS, DRS is enabled this lap, so uh, there is only one straight, uh, which is the main straight, that has DRS. All of the other straights are not long enough for DRS to be useful, so... Um We'll see how that plays out for them. But last year, it was a very, very good overtaking opportunity. Carlos Sainz has just overtaken Fernando Alonso going through into turn number one. So a solid job there from Carlos Sainz. Uh, overtaking Fernando Alonso, who's in fact his childhood hero of Formula One. So a uh, very, very interesting dynamic there between Sainz and Alonso. But he makes the overtake stick and moves. And his next target is Daniel Ricciardo. Um, 
We've got 5,000 people tuning in, but only 500 likes. If you could hit 1,000 likes, that would be absolutely epic, guys. I uh, really do appreciate all your support. We've got 14 more laps of this sprint race. We're one third of the way through now. Um, also, all of your subscriptions and likes are very much appreciated. Uh, and hopefully, we can see uh, us hitting that target. All right. Um, DRS is enabled. Perez is firmly within Magnussen's DRS range, and as they come out the final corner, we'll see how they how they battle it out. So Perez will have DRS and he'll also have the slipstream. We'll see what he can do now. Going down the start finish straight, he's firmly right behind Ma uh, Kevin Magnussen to maximize that slipstream slipstream effect. And here he is pulling out to the side now. He's side by side with Kevin Magnussen going down the straight into turn number one. Magnussen takes the inside line. Perez takes the outside line, and it's a quite a simple move for Sergio Perez. Just swoops around the outside of Kevin Magnussen because Magnussen's on those uh, slower medium tires and he just does not have the pace to compete with the Red Bull and that's fair enough the Red Bull is a very very fast car especially down that straight uh Further down the field, Kev, uh, Lewis Hamilton has just overtaken Lance Stroll. Uh, seems very, very weird to say that. Uh, Hamilton now just moved up into 14th position. Um, not where he's used to being, to be completely honest. Uh, and that Mercedes car has not improved uh, in, in the race of what we are expecting. We're expecting the, the Mercedes car to be so much quicker uh, in the race pace compared to all of the other cars because usually that's what's been happening for the past couple of weeks but the the race pace isn't really coming through for the Mercedes team we'll have to find out if that carries on tomorrow and if it does it could be a very big struggle to maybe even score some points um but Sergio Perez now moving up into fourth position, the fastest first sector because of that massive toe he got behind Kevin Magnussen. And he'll probably go on to set the fastest lap of the race, which is currently held by Charles Leclerc. Gap at the front between the two leaders, Leclerc and Verstappen. As you can see on the map, they, Leclerc and Verstappen have just pulled away into a league of their own. Uh, but the gap is hovering just around that one second mark. So if Verstappen can push that tiny bit more, deploy a slight bit more overtake mode, then he could get onto the tail of Charles Leclerc. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, all right. We've got Valtteri Bottas, who's just overtaken Sebastian Vettel. Uh, and that is quite, uh, that was very expected, in fact, because Bottas had so much pace yesterday in qualifying. That engine issue, though, uh, really uh, hampering his progress. Uh, now, Sebastian Vettel is in 10th position. He'll do his best to stay there. Uh, behind him now is Mick Schumacher, who's on the medium tires. So I think Mick's going to have a pretty tough time making an overtake stick on Sebastian Vettel. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Um... So there we go. All right. Uh, Carlos Sainz is on the tail of Daniel Ricciardo, and he is getting dangerously close to making an overtake. But the thing is, Daniel Ricciardo has got DRS on, on Kevin Magnussen, which is making it rather tough for him to get uh, anywhere close um, to, well, get, get a proper slipstream going down the straight, really. So we'll have to wait and see how... Um, how Carlos Sainz can actually make that overtake stick because it's his, in his best interest. He's just got a two-year contract extension with Ferrari to, 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 to stay there and potentially challenge for championships. So he needs to bring his A game and pull off some crazy moves here. Daniel Ricciardo getting dangerously close to Kevin Magnussen as well. You can see them on the map. They're practically uh, all over each other going down the straights, uh, but they're not getting close enough. And I think it's just because that, that Mercedes engine this year, because of the new fuel that they've got they're just slightly down on power going down the straights and that just is really hampering ricardo's prog uh, progress up the field um and yeah so the ferrari engine is a bit too fast for that uh for the mercs to keep up with for the mercedes engine to keep up with uh, and daniel ricardo struggling to overtake kevin magnuson even though he's on the faster tires um so now we got 10 we're 10 laps through the 21 lap race um now and we have got 6,000 people watching. Absolutely insane. Everyone that's tuning in, thank you so, so much for the support. Uh, and if you want to go hit, well, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe if you are new here. I stream every single uh, qualifying and sprint race and normal race. Um, so I am streaming for tomorrow. So I, I would go ahead to turn the notification bell on so you do not miss that. Um, all right, back to the race, though. Uh, we've got... Um, what is it? Sergio Perez right on Norris's tail. In fact, here we go. Sergio Perez pulls out side by side. He's ahead of Lando Nor Norris going down the straight. That Red Bull top speed is really helping him out. And Lando Norris decides not to fight it. Um, otherwise, it was going to be very, very tough indeed. And in fact, as I say that, Daniel Ricciardo just... Uh, just makes the move on Kevin Magnussen as well. So solid job there from 
uh, Daniel Ricciardo uh, makes the overtake on Kevin Magnussen and and secures that. So now it's a Ferrari, then two Red Bulls and two M McLarens. And then we've got Kevin Magnussen in the Haas in sixth. I don't know exactly why Haas went for the medium tires, but it wasn't the best strategy choice. But um, I think the safety car, they were expecting there not to be a safety car. And the safety car really did screw over uh, anyone in that uh, anyone who was starting on the medium tires. So there we go. Um, back now, Kevin, uh, Sergio Perez, once again, another fastest first sector because of that DRS and slipstream going down the straight. Um, but I don't think he'll be, a, he'll be setting fastest lap. And also another thing to point out guys, uh, because the gaps between the points now that there's only one, if you go up one position, you only gain one extra point. Whereas say, say you're in second place and you're tr trying to overtake into first place. Now, uh, you're, you're going to gain seven points normally in a race. That seven points is quite a big margin, but in this race, if you only, uh, improve if you improve by one position, you only get one extra point. So it's not really that big of a reward um, to try and push so, so hard to try and actually get that overtake to happen. Um, and it's not like worth it in terms of the risk. So we might see uh, Verstappen not try and push Leclerc that hard. Uh, saying that though, the gap is decreasing. It's hovering around one and a half seconds. Uh, maybe Verstappen will try and attack towards the end of this race and he's saving up some battery. But uh, the dirty air is really uh, going to start overheating his tyres and Leclerc will have all of the clean air in the world and no sights of any traffic whatsoever. So it's going to be tough for Verstappen, but we all know Verstappen, when he wants to put those... Uh, really fast quality laps in he can do that um Carlos Sainz has just made an overtake on Kevin Magnussen so Carlos Sainz started the race in 10th position now up into 6th position and Sergio Perez started the race in 8th position he's up into 5th position uh, into 3rd position sorry um so both drivers who needed to do a recovery drive have done a solid recovery drive and moved their way up through the field uh, and now we've got Kevin Magnussen who's dropped down a bit and I think that's mainly because of those those that medium tire choice uh, very 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 unfortunate strategy there for uh Haas. If it wasn't for the safety car, uh, Haas and, well, Magnussen and Schumacher are both would have uh, been able to come back at these soft tyre runners, but it, it's looking rather unlikely here. Um, also, guys, we're very, very close to hitting a thousand likes. So if we could hit a thousand likes, that would be absolutely insane. Uh, really do appreciate all of your support, though. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, and yeah, there we go. All right, um, let's see who is close to making an overtake. It is, well, we've got a little bit of a train forming behind Kevin Magnussen. We've got Fernando Alonso and Valtteri Bottas. But uh, Fernando Alonso seemed to have really good pace, but I think the Alpine is very quick in qualifying and their race pace kind of drops off uh, the heavier the fuel load. So uh, Fernando Alonso is really struggling here. Uh, I think it might be the tire wear that the Alpine gets. Uh, he just can't manage, he can't like, oh, he can't push too much because the tires start overheating too much and it's really a bit of a struggle uh, to actually like keep those tires in the correct window for Fernando Alonso so that's why he's down in eighth position we'll see if he can uh, overtake Kevin Magnussen but I think around about now lap number 13 lap number 14 is when the soft tires start to get slower than the medium tires and the medium tires start to get quicker um but we'll have to wait and see. It all depends on how the how the drivers have been managing their tyres. Uh, but there is a huge gap up at the front. Uh, I mean, just look at that gap between Leclerc and Verstappen. Well, Leclerc, Verstappen and Perez and Norris. Both Perez and Norris are kind of just in the race of their own. It must be pretty boring out there. No chance of getting anyone to overtake. Uh, in fact, in the t on the on Daniel Ricciardo's tail right now, Carlos Sainz just makes the overtake on him going into turn number one. So Carlos Sainz moving from 10th all the way up into 5th. Both... Both now, Perez and Sainz have made up five positions in 14 laps. Two thirds of the race has, has gone by and both drivers have made five overtakes to move up five positions. Um, so a solid job there. Uh, Carlos Sainz will now uh, be in a very good position to potentially battle for... Um, for a podium tomorrow, which which he sorely needs uh, after his horrible qualifying uh, in yesterday and his really uh, and a weekend to forget really in Australia that he had. So Carlos Sainz really needs a little bit of a boost, and I think a podium can do exactly that. Um, all right, so uh, Charles Leclerc has got fresh uh, has got fresh and clean air, but. 
Ma Kevin, uh, not Kevin Magnussen, Max Verstappen is closing the gap. The gap was previously one and a half seconds. It's down to 1.2. So I think now in the final third of this race, the last six laps of the race, uh, Kevin Magnussen will be getting, uh, not Ke why am I saying Kevin Magnussen? Max Verstappen will be getting closer and closer uh, and he'll be deploying a bit more battery to potentially make that overtake for the lead of this race. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, all right, we've got a very big train forming behind Sebastian Vettel. We've got Vettel, Schumacher, Russell, Sonoda, and Hamilton all in a DRS train. Choo-choo, let's go. Um, but yeah, they're all in a DRS train behind Sebastian Vettel because that Aston Martin is not quick down the straights and it's not quick through the corners. And as I say that, Mick Schumacher makes the overtake on Sebastian Vettel. And this is what we're saying. The medium tires are starting to get quicker than the softs. So Mick Schumacher has the pace advantage and he makes the overtake on Sebastian Vettel. Next up... Uh, for George Russell is Sebastian Vettel to make the overtake the gap now four tenths of a second and I think going down the straight the next lap we'll have we'll see a little bit of a battle there um all right we've got 7,000 people watching that's absolutely insane everyone that's tuning in thank you so so much really do do appreciate all of your support um so go ahead and hit that like button and I'm going to be streaming for tomorrow's race as well and there's going to be a lot more of this action coming up uh so make sure you are uh, subscribed and got that bell on so you don't miss the race all right, uh, Sergio Perez is now in third place, holds the fastest lap of the race, but he's not closing up anywhere to Leclerc and Verstappen. And as I say that, Verstappen has got within the DRS range of Charles Leclerc. So the gap was down to one, or it was 1.5 seconds previously. It's down to one second now. And I think what was happening... Uh, Max Verstappen dropped off a bit to conserve his tyres and to like make sure they were, they're not overheating and preserve them, really, for this final five laps where he can go maximum attack um, and really attack again. Well, maximum attack and um, actually battle uh, against Charles Leclerc right at the end of this race. Uh, DCS Beamer, thank you for the donation. Quote of the day, the Aston Martin is not quick on the straights and it's not quick in the corners. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, that's pretty true. Uh, I think that they're, they're the only team not to score points uh, and Vettel is quite quickly going to lose a position to George Russell as well. Uh, but thank you for the donation. Really do appreciate it. Um, it does. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. So thank you so, so much. Uh, and everyone that subscribed and tuned in, in fact, it, it, all of you, thank you so much. It just means so much Like that you guys want to actually listen to my commentary. Uh, very, very crazy indeed. But back to the race. Verstappen has just driven through the DRS detection point and he's got within the, the actual DRS zone. Uh, he's within that one second range. He's got the slipstream going down the straight and the gap is coming down. The, the extra top speed that Red Bull's really coming through. Uh, the gap is half a second going into turn number one. But I suspect next lap it's going to be even closer. All right, here we go. Four laps left till the end of this race. And the gap between Verstappen and Leclerc is half a second. I cannot wait. Uh, further down the field, Bottas has just overtaken Fernando Alonso. Um, so Bottas doing a good job there. Uh, but Fernando Alonso really not where he needs to be in terms of race pace. And that Alpine is ne isn't either. Um, but here we go. Uh, Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc going through Ravazza now. This is where this is one corner where the dirty air is really going to hurt Max Verstappen. And you can see him. He's turning that steering wheel so, so much and not getting any, any sort of response, really. He's getting quite a bit of understeer. Uh, but that's mainly because of the DRS going into Varianta Ult now. Very big braking zone. Braking from the 50 meter mark. And then a double chicane all all over the curbs, both drivers pushing the absolute limits. Then here into uh, Rivatsa 1 and Rivatsa 2. It's a downhill braking zone. It's going to be very, very tough. And a tiny little lockup means you go slightly wide and Leclerc could be getting put under pressure here. And a tiny mistake from him could, could put him on the back foot. So going down the straight, Verstappen now two tenths closer than he was last lap. He's got the DRS. He is tucked in to Charles Leclerc's slipstream and he is getting closer and closer going down the straight now. Can he make an overtake? No, he cannot. This time he got a bit he got a bit squirrely on the exit of the final corner got a tiny bit of oversteer and that compromised his exit but no, no fear there's three laps still left of this race and we could see Verstappen still make an overtake st uh, stick we've got 8,600 people watching absolutely insane um if you guys could hit the like button and subscribe please be sure to do so um and I think Max Verstappen, what he's been doing for the past, uh, I think, 15 or so laps, he's been charging up that battery. Uh, and I think that battery percentage is going to be pretty high. He's getting closer and closer to Leclerc every single corner. Uh, and it will be a matter of time before we see a battle between these two. Um, further down the field, there's Russell's right on Vettel's tail. We're going into turn number one, Vettel narrowly uh, stays ahead of George Russell and it's, it's going to be a tough battle, tough uphill, uphill battle if Sebastian Vettel wants to score some points tomorrow.
tomorrow. Um, otherwise, it could be a very long season for Aston Martin getting zero points uh, by the looks of it. It'll be very, very tough on them. We'll have to wait and see. We're, we're getting close to 9,000 viewers. Absolutely crazy considering this is Saturday. Um, and we, we're not even at the full race day. I expect all you guys to tune in to tomorrow's race as well because the, the battle between Leclerc and Verstappen will not stop. And here they are going down the straight again. This time Verstappen one, one more tenth closer. He's half a second now. He's into the slipstream. He's pulled out alongside Charles Leclerc and going into turn number one. Leclerc just maintains that lead over Max Verstappen. Verstappen decides to back off off slightly and not go too aggressive this time um but this is the closest he's ever been uh, and we could potentially see an overtake occurring on the next lap or the second to last lap we'll have to wait and see Carlos Sainz though going down the straight against Lando Norris what an overtake from Carlos Sainz absolutely sensational just so late on the brakes and he, he gets past Lando Norris what a job uh, what a, what an overtake really um sensational move there so now it's Ferrari Red Bull Red Bull Ferrari so the the tactics and the strategy battle for tomorrow is going to be crazy we, the, the the strategists are going to be playing 4d chess um and then we've got the two mclarens in fifth and sixth they've gone all the way from third and fourth slowest team uh, at the start of the season all the way now up into the third fastest team great recovery from mclaren um but here we go now going into the final um second to last lap penultimate lap now with leclerc and verstappen right on each other's tail well Verstappen right on Leclerc's tail four tenths is the gap this is the closest he has ever been as long as he doesn't get a bit of oversteer coming out of this final corner he is going to be right on Leclerc's tail and he has not got any oversteer so he's got the slipstream he has got the DRS he's going down the straight and he's pulled out side by side now Verstappen side by side with Leclerc he's ahead of Leclerc going to turn one he goes around the outside Leclerc cannot defend it so this is it the penultimate lap of the race Leclerc, uh, Verstappen is in the lead Leclerc Leclerc in second place. Leclerc has one shot and one shot only to make that overtake uh, happen, uh, which is going to be going into turn number one on the final lap of this race. Let's see what happens here. Uh, let me know what your predictions are in the chat. Who do you think is going to maintain this lead? But Leclerc and Verstappen, they are battling to the absolute limit. Um, all right, uh, Carlos Sainz with the fastest first sector, but I don't think that's going to get him fastest lap anyway, and there's no points for fastest lap. Yuki Snowda has just overtaken Sebastian Vettel. Yeah, Vettel's really falling off the pace here. His soft tyre's not doing so well, and that Aston Martin might be a bit of a heavy car causing all of that tyre wear. Uh, talking of Verstappen versus Leclerc, the gap has dropped out of DR, has dropped over one second, and by the looks of it, Leclerc hasn't been driving any sort of dirty air for the entire race. He has no idea how the car's going to react in terms of uh, where he can push where he can't so the gap between the two drivers 1.2 seconds so unless Verstappen makes a mistake not here going into the final uh, in the final lap then it looks like it will be very very tough for Leclerc to make an overtake so here they go down the start finish straight the Ferrari has turned their engines up to the max the Tifosi are not happy that Verstappen has just made the overtake on Leclerc um but 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 it is what it is. Verstappen has got that the extra top speed, and it's just it's just worked out well for him. Leclerc now uh, following th following Verstappen through through turn number three, uh, he's pushing all the way to the limit. He's getting right up onto the edge of the curb, but to no avail. The gap between the two drivers is getting bigger and bigger as we speak. Uh, and that's that's about it really going into the hairpin of Tosa Verstappen uh, gets through smoothly and the same can be said for Leclerc but the gap is getting so so big and I think what happened Leclerc just de depleted way too much of his battery trying to defend against Verstappen the thing was the Verstappen's top speed was so so high Leclerc had to use a lot of battery to actually stay in front of him until the second to last lap and then now he's run out of charge we'll just have to wait and see but look Perez is getting dangerously close to Leclerc now because Pe Leclerc's pace has really dropped off Perez is now 2.2 seconds behind Leclerc. There's only two corners left to go. Um, but Verstappen now comes through with that to one on the downhill braking zone. Doesn't make a mistake. Doesn't go into the gravel. Comes out of the final corner. A very nice exit there. Max Verstappen crosses the line to take the sprint race victory for Red Bull at Imola here today. Uh, Charles Leclerc comes home in second place after a, a very unlucky overtake. Well, a very unfortunate overtake uh, on the penultimate lap, Sergio Perez has done a great job, started the race in eighth, all the way up into third position. Carlos Sainz started the race in tenth, all the way up into fourth. Both drivers, solid recovery drive. Um, and then we have Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo in fifth and sixth. Absolutely insane. Everyone that has tuned in, thank you so, so much. Um, 
Yeah, guys, it's not the end of the race. I don't know why it said 22 out of... Uh, the race is over, by the way. Uh, I don't know why it says 22 out of 21. So just, just ignore that. Um, but there we go. Uh, everyone that's tuned in, thank you so, so much for all of the support. Uh, the race has completed. I'm just going to point that out. Um, I should probably uh, turn that off. There we go. Um, and I'll just change that. 21. All right, 21 out of 21 laps have been completed. Uh, I am I am streaming for tomorrow's race. So if you guys haven't hit the subscribe button or the like button, please be sure to do so. It really does help out. Um, but it's been one heck of a, a sprint race today uh, and lots of overtaking, lots of action. And I'm going to see, a, we're going to see a lot more of that tomorrow now. Uh, so we'll just have to, well, it's going to be so, so interesting. All right, here we go. Um, DCS Beamer, second donation this stream. Thank you so, so much. Awesome stream as always. Catch you all again tomorrow for the main race. Yeah, we got 8,000 people watching right now. I expect all you guys to show up for tomorrow's race because the overtaking is going to be absolutely crazy. And this battle between Verstappen and Leclerc is going to go so, so well. Uh, can you do 20 or so laps on softs? Well, the thing is, the drivers only had a third of the fuel in the car. So the third of the fuel in the car really helped the drivers to, um, to actually do 20 laps. If they were on full fuel, then I don't think they would have been able to do 20 laps on the soft tires but they're only on a third of the fuel because the, lap, the race was only 20 laps long rather than 63 laps long um and there we go uh, it's been a pleasure commentating to you guys uh thank you so so much um but so the rest of the grid Valtteri Bottas uh, started the race in eighth place has finished up in seventh done a good job there uh he couldn't really get any very close to the McLarens because the the McLarens just were kind of slightly too out of his uh, out of his range but a solid job there from Valtteri Bottas nevertheless and we have Kevin Magnussen in eighth position and Fernando Alonso in ninth with Mick Schumacher in tenth both Hasses uh potentially scoring points tomorrow George Russell on the cusp of the points in 11th position with Yuki Tsunoda in 12th. He actually started the race all the way down in 16th. So a solid progress for Yuki Tsunoda moving up four positions. The same can't be said for his teammate going all the way down in 17th position. Um, and then we've got Sebastian Vettel in 13th. He's dropped down five places. Not ideal for him. So uh, Lewis Hamilton gained one position, I think, or gained two positions. Um, and then we've got the rest of the drivers in 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th as Stroll, Ocon, Gasly, Albon, Latifi, and Guan Yu Zhou. So, oh, uh, Zach Stutzman. Um, thank you for the $5 donation. Thanks for the awesome stream. Wish K-Mag could have pulled something better. Uh, love to see Bottas where he is. Yeah, I mean, I think K-Mag got a bit screwed over by the strategy. If he started on the soft tyres, I think maybe he could have stayed ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Um, but the medium tyres really didn't help that much. Um, so there we go. Uh, but we've still got 4,000 people watching. And thank you again for the donation, Zach. It does help out the channel so, so much. And I really do um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, yeah, what a stream it has been, guys. Um, I'm, I'm streaming all the way. I'm streaming tomorrow as well. So be sure to tune in for that. Um, listening from the straits. Great commentating. Awesome channel and rolling stats. Love to see tomorrow's race. Let's go, Max. Shalom. Again, another donation. Uh, thank you so, so much. Yeah, you, you donated yesterday as well. You, uh, really, uh, I'm so, so grateful to have such, uh, such great fans like you uh, in the chat. Uh, do appreciate it so, so much. Um, yeah, wow. Uh, so I'm probably going to wrap up this stream now. Uh, and when I when I do end this stream, it will take you to tomorrow's stream. Uh, so I, I suggest that you go and he go ahead and press that uh, reminder button so you don't miss the race. Um, the sprint race is 20 is a third of the normal race. Uh, and so 21 laps tomorrow. We have 63 laps of racing around Imola. And uh, yeah, we got Verstappen starting in first place and Leclerc starting in second with Perez in third and Sainz in fourth. Uh, it's going to be one heck of a battle at the front, especially for the strategy side uh, and and the and the pure pure race as well um, between all the drivers. So thank you everyone for tuning in. It's been a pleasure commentating to you guys. Have a nice morning, day, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. It's going to send you to tomorrow's stream. So go ahead uh, and... Um, Make sure you have got the reminder on for that uh, and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers, fellas.